Hi, this is Sung, the Principal and Director of Sky Academy. And uh, in this episode of the topic um, functions and relations, we will be looking at composite functions. Right? Now, a composite function is one that, is, that, is, that has a separate set of domains, each governed by its own rule. So, for example, an ex uh, here, here, is, here is a particular example of a composite function. In this case, um, f of x is equal to minus 2x for the domain x is less than or equal to negative 1. It's governed by the rule f of x is equal to 3 for the domain uh, between negative 1 and 3 not equals to, right? And it's also equal to f of x is equal to x for the domain x is greater than or equal to 3. All right, so how would you go about graphing this sort of problem? Because when you get composite graphs, that's basically what you'll be asked to do is to graph it, okay? So let's have a look at what you might do. First thing I would do is with a different colored pen, I would specifically, um, uh, uh, separate or, or draw a, a line of division um, for each of the each of the separate domains. All right. So the first one is between minus one is a critical point, and then three is also a critical point. Right. So let's on this graph draw minus one, minus one here, and then three is uh, one, two, one, two, three, right. So what I would do is, is I would draw that line of division right there. Now, I put a dotted line because I know that this isn't going to be part of my graph. It's just going to be there to help us graph it. Does that make sense? So the first thing I would do is I would divide the number plane up into our specific domains. All right, so that's step number one. Step number two is I would graph this bit, all right? So for the bit that's below um, minus one or to the left of minus one, the graph would be equal to y is equal to negative two x. So you can think of f of x as being y. So y is equal to negative two x, all right? Um, and that's for the domain x is less than or equal to minus 1. So, let's have a look at what that would, let's have a think about what that would look like. At minus 1, the graph would be equal to 2, because minus 1 times minus 2 is 2. So, let's, let's do that. Uh, 1, 2, so it would be equal to there. Right? And it has a gradient of minus 2. Right? So what that means is the gradient won't look this way, it'll be looking this way. And for every one that it goes across, it'll be going two up, one, two. So it would look something like this. Not only would that be the gradient, but you would also note that you include the point minus, at minus one there. So at minus one, because it's less than or equal to, it would include that point. So you'd put like a colored dot there, right? And then between minus one and three, it's equal to three. So you'd go up to three, uh, one, one, two, three. Now, it's not equal to 3 at minus 1 or at x equals to 3. So, you'd put a circle dot there and there. But everything else would be included. So, it would look like that. And then for the rest of the graph, it would be equal to x. So, in other words, at 3, it would be equal to 3. So, it is a coloured dot there after all. And the gradient would be 1. So that would be the composite graph 
this would be the composite graph for that particular composite function. Okay, good. So I'll just stand over here so you can have a look at what the graph finally looks like. And do you see how each of the components there is represented in the graph within each of its separate domains? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for watching.